here in this quaint little village nestled away in the Alps of Austria, a population of 800 people cater to around 3 million tourists each and every year. Hallstatt is so famous in fact that China have actually recreated a replica of this little village, a project that cost them over $1 billion to achieve. But what is it that makes Hallstatt so special? Join us as we find out exactly what that is. Drone. First time crashing the drone. Found it. I'm about to go through all sorts of brambles to get up here. I used the, the GPS on there to try find it. I crashed it into a tree. We've just arrived in um, Hallstatt and we are waiting for a shuttle to get into the main city and we've just been stopped by a um, South Korean couple who have a high car and their car has run out of um, oil um, and he didn't know how to do it bless him so Dan's helping him in the rain. Karlstadt's mountainous location is extremely remote. It is so remote, in fact, that up until 1890, there weren't even any roads here. The only way you could reach Karlstadt was by walking along the narrow trails or by boat across the lake, which also happened to be their most reliable source of food. Let's try that food. Right, one thing that you need to try when you're in Hallstatt is the river trout. One trout, 24 euros 40, or you can try a char, which is 33.60. I'm not just being tight, I'm, I wanna try the trout. Nat's gonna get the trout as well. The speciality from our lakes, the grilled renan, renan I'm gonna get that actually. 44 euros 40, that's a special fish. It's expensive, isn't it? Even. I don't give a f actually. The larger the fish, the better the taste, apparently. My fish better be big then when it comes out. This is a renanke. A local fish from the lake. It is a white fish. The only thing anybody really cares about is does it actually taste nice and is it worth ordering? The skin sounds nice. Salty as fuck, bro. You don't want to try some trout? Oh, no, go on then. Try river trout. Yours is better than mine. Is it? Mm. The river trout is better than the Renan here. It's bigger as well, and it's half the price. Win, win, win. Well done, Natalia. Natalia actually loved that food, didn't you? Yes. Don't do that. It was delicious. <laughs> My favourite meal in Austria yet. And I think a whole fish for 24 euro in this place is quite good. Which I only paid 24. Place. Yeah, well, our mum was bigger. Right. Well, it's still pissing it down outside, so I'm going to take this opportunity to show you the room. And be warned, the accommodation is not cheap around here.
This bathroom is my favourite bit. Look at this. Waterfall shower. Nice little sink. Can sit on it, lay on there to dry out. With bathrobes. Pretty good. I love the bathrobes. Oh, there we go. Lights are on. Oh, you've got a little, little um, feature wall back there. How much was this one per night, Natalia? Um, it was around £240. £240 a night. Which sounds like quite a lot. It's definitely over our budget, but it's, the accommodation here is really expensive. Um, on average, how on much would you... On average, it's about 160 to 180 for a bog standard hotel room. Right. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. This is very unique. Mm-hmm. Perfect. It's an old well house, I believe. It's an old well house? Yes. Awesome. Come on in. Let's go and see what makes this place so special. Nah, the camera can't get wet, alright? How far is the walk? Why don't you start the route? Start the route. Turn right onto Zeestrasse. Yes. <sighs> Me and Dan hate each other today. All those people that moan that we don't walk closely together, this is why. Now you see, now you understand. Where are you going? There's a puddle. There's a person. There's a puddle. You're not holding the umbrella high enough, but she won't let me hold it because apparently I'm not getting her in it. It's ridiculous. My feet are getting wet. <laughs> right, let, how, how far is the walk to the mine? A 10 minute walk in the rain together under this umbrella. I think I'd rather get wet. Go <laughs> Da, 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 da. Tickets. Funicular. Funicular Railway. Now, you might be wondering what a funicular is. Imagine if a train and a cable car had a baby. That is a funicular. That baby would be perfect for climbing up steep slopes. It's essentially a series of carts up a track, up a steep slope, connected by a thick cable, and it just pulls it up all the way up. That is a funicular. It's fun, funicular. That's where it comes from. That's the reason for the word. It's fun, funicular. No, I like the word. I've only just learned it, so I'm very happy about it. I will show you what a funicular looks like. Yeah. This particular funicular goes up 325 meters and only takes a few minutes. How long? 15 minutes, isn't it? I don't know. There you go. See the thick cable there? Pulls it all the way up the tracks. In these little carts here, with these lovely people. Hey, here we go. Speed of it. We're actually going quite fast, look. Boosting up the hill. So, ignore my 15-minute bullshit earlier. It literally does take you up in a few minutes. There we go. This is what travel's all about, trying new things. That's my first That's ever much ride. Better, much better than the uh, cable car. It's faster. Cable car makes you feel sick. It's faster than a cable car. That was my first ever ride in a, in a funicular, and that was good fun. Just like that. Considering we've not long come from Lake Como, I'd say that's a pretty, pretty um, good competitor. I would actually say it's better. Just because it's less built up. It looks just like natural peace. And hey, don't worry about the salt mines, I think I've seen enough of you. Yeah, let's go. <laughs>
The Hallstatt salt mine is the oldest salt mine in the world. And you might be thinking, big whoop. It's a big hole in the ground where people get their salt from. And you might be right in thinking that. But without this mine, none of this would have started. Hallstatt would not exist. It's not one for the claustrophobic. How are you doing in here, Nat? The feather we're going in, the more I'm freaking out a little bit. You're freaking out a little bit? <laughs> Look at that, it's a long way down. It's about a 350 metre walk, but that is nothing compared to the actual vastness of the tunnels in here. Over 30 kilometres of tunnels are in this mine. So we have to stay with a group, or we could get very, very lost. It's like a little glistening mm -hmm. on all the wood in here. I don't know if I'm going to pick that up. That's salt. Imagine how much wood they've used in here. Look at this. Just imagine how many trees were cut down to create these tunnels. 30 kilometers of tunnels held up by wood. Look at this. It's all salt all salt in the rock. This is air salt, what I've been tasting. You get all the little bits in your mouth as well is the only problem. It's not very enjoyable to taste, but you can give it a go if you're gonna come here. Why don't you just lick the wall? I'm already getting too many bits in my mouth, man. All right, now, the way these miners got down to the next level in the mine is they slide. Box is yeah. Okay, yes. Is Ready? Is Let's recording? Go. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah. Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> feet up, feet up. And thank God we ain't got to walk out of here because we're going to get the miners' cart instead. It's only 350 metres in ADR. No, it's not only 350 metres. Oh, is it not? We went down two slides. No. I'm not walking back up there. There are also two viewpoints here. One being the Hallstatt Skywalk, which is otherwise known as the World Heritage View. It sits at about 360 metres above the lake and is basically right next to the salt mine. So it's very easy to get to. You can walk up here for free if you want. You can get the funicular, which is what we obviously did to get up here. Look at this. So you see you have the, the Skywalks just over there. That's the Skywalk. And it gives you a full view either side of the lake, the whole thing. The other view is Obertron, Obertron, which is a mountain. The Obertron viewpoint is that one right over there, right up on that top peak over there, 2,100 meters above, and you can see absolutely everything from up there. It's about an hour's drive. You'll need a, you'll need a private car to get up there, really. Uh, about an hour's drive, Obertron, Five Fingers viewpoint, it's called. All right. Let's go have a little look around then, shall we? Yeah. Everybody has their job, nine to five, and getting drained. They settle for second best, scared to risk what the future might bring. So, Natalia, what the future after might we've um, just walk down. Would you recommend people to get the funicular or walk down? I think you should get the funicular up and then walk down. Yeah, agreed. Walk down. Oh. Go on, don't worry about that. Walk down is beautiful. Like you get a really nice view of the centre when you walk down, don't you? Yes, and the lake. And the lake, and there's a waterfall. 
lovely. It's well worth doing. I really, really recommend. And there's like a little viewpoint where you can see the village. Like it's kind of like rounded. I've seen pictures on the internet and you can see that from that way. Awesome, sweet. Right, there's one more thing in Hallstatt that I want to show you. Obviously in Austria, we've been having a hearty meal in the middle of the day, about 11.30 in the morning to immerse ourselves in the culture. The problem with that, and I don't know if you're feeling the same as me right now, but I could do with just having some, something sweet. Yeah, like, dessert. Like, Apfel strudel. Apfel strudel and vanilla sauce. Yeah, mm. so, so this is the thing, right? We're having a hearty meal earlier on in the day. And then when it gets to about this time, half six, I don't feel like having a whole meal, but I also don't want something savory. I want something sweet. I don't just want anything. I want apple strudel. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, let's go and find some. Okay. There must be some here somewhere. Yeah. It is an Austrian dish after all, believe it or not. I used to think it was German. It's actually not, it's an Austrian dish. Created here in Austria. Um, where though, I don't know. Let's I don't know. We'll have a little walk around and try and find a bakery. Kebab does sound nice though. There's a lot of people in there. You want to get fast food? I kind of feel like it. He's, he's done me. It looks nice. Nice kebab. What are you saying? I'm not doing it. You want apple strudel? Yeah, but you can have that and I'll have apple strudel after. Yeah, I want a kebab. <laughs> he's appetised me. I didn't want nothing savoury literally three minutes ago. Oh. I haven't had a kebab in so long. Hopefully, it don't give me the shits. Are you having apple strudel as well? Uh, I'm not sharing my with you. Well, I wanted a bite. Not nice. You're going to take a bite of my kebab and steal it from me. I am not, and you are not having any of my apple strudel. Because well, you would never like, oh, I have a bite. You have half of it. Bullshit. No. It's the other way around. No. You're greedy. Can I bitte ein Kebab haben, bitte? Kebab? Zum See, mitnehmen. Uh, ja. Zum mitnehmen. Zum mitnehmen. Ja. Zum mitnehmen. Danke. Zwiebeln ist da also ja gut vom Anfang ist alles? Ja, bitte. Zwiebeln mein Fisch. Zwiebeln ja. mein Fisch. Danke schon. Danke schon. Natalia was telling me a whole host of things to say there. It got very confusing and I've ended up with the wrong thing. I wanted a, a dull room. Durum. 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 Alright, is that easy? <laughs> Alright. I wanted a Durum kebab. But I've ended up with a kebab kebab. Right, she was throwing so many words at me, I got confused and Dan wanted to order for himself, so I told him how to say it, take away. Yeah, but it was too too much, mate. It's, it's it's not it's not as easy as take away, it's submit nimmen. That's it, isn't it? Submit nimmen. That's exactly what I said. It's happens all the way to combine the Sum mit nimmen. Yeah, why didn't you say that earlier? Because I was getting you your oh, Anyway, let's try this kebab. <laughs> My first Austrian kebab. I see these places everywhere. Hopefully it's good. I think you put all the sauce and everything in there. Yeah, you did. Thank you for that. I mean, it's very popular. There's, There's a lot of people here. There's local people eating here. That's good. And also, conveniently, the place just behind us, Heritage, they do absolute strudel for me. Do they? Yes. Hmm, sick. I probably will get one of them as well. Yeah. But the good thing about the kebabs out here is they're not dirty like the ones at home. And you, if you get a kebab, it's because you've been on the piss all night. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They like here, the German kebabs. Here, it's like a German kebab. It's, 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 it feels a lot cleaner. They're German kebabs, but that are actually Turkish kebabs. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turkish influence is why all well, this is here. Yeah. Apple strudel. This, this is what I wanted to show you. St. Michael's Chapel. 
inside here is what's known as an ossuary. And if you're wondering what an ossuary is, an ossuary is a box or a chest or a, a building. It's basically a site that's been made to serve as the final resting place of human remains. And in here is an ossuary. Let's go and have a look. This is the ossuary here in Hellstadt. There are 1,200 skulls in here, 600 of which have been painted with the names and dates of the people who once owned these skulls. Crazy. A little bit spooky, you can't lie. This process of an ossuary it's also sometimes known as grave recycling, where there's just no land here. They have to dig up the graves and do something with the remains. So they create a memorial like this. And then use the graves for the people who have died more recently. It's gonna be me and you one day. That's all that's gonna be left. And you? I'm gonna be get cremated. You're going to get cremated? Yeah. Alright, oh, well, you're going to be ashes then? Yeah. Oh, as you can see, the later it gets in the day, the more tourists turn up. <laughs> Just imagine living here. Imagine your family's lived here for all these years, and all of a sudden, Somebody decides to name this a new UNESCO World Heritage Site and suddenly you get a mad influx of tourists flocking to your quaint little village in the middle of the mountains. Imagine how much of a transition that must have been for the people who lived here. All right, we're gonna explore this little town a little longer. And then we've got to hit the road. We're going further into the Alps next. See you then.